God had not revealed himself to me. If God had not revealed himself to me, and if the Blessed Virgin Mary had not revealed herself to me and brought me into the Catholic Church, I probably would have died and I probably would have been condemned. I was born and raised Jewish, uh, very Jewish family, very Jewish world, very Jewish education, uh, all the way until university. I went to a Massachusetts Institute of Technology, which is a scientific technical university, and I lost my belief in God there, I lost my faith. I became essentially atheist. I went on to Harvard Business School and um, was obviously pursuing a fairly worldly career and, and worldly perspective. And um, after I got my degree from Harvard Business School, I was invited back to join the faculty. So I found myself as a professor of marketing at Harvard Business School at the age of 29. And although it may sound rather surprising, that's actually when the bottom fell out of my world. Because ever since I had been a small child, I knew there has to be a real meaning and purpose to life and expected to come into the real meaning and purpose of life at some point when I got older. As a matter of fact, as a child, I thought it would come at my bar mitzvah, which is like the Catholic confirmation when the child is 13 and enters into a personal relationship with God. Uh, I thought I would enter into a personal relationship with God. When that didn't happen, um, it was actually one of the saddest days of my life, but then I got distracted with um, worldly life, so to speak, high school and university and Harvard Business School and so forth. But I always thought there was something out there that would give my life real meaning uh, then I thought it would be when I began my career, um, but I was already more successful in a worldly career than I had ever anticipated being a professor at Harvard. But there was still no meaning or purpose to life, and therefore I fell into the darkest despair of my life at that point. I was walking in nature early one morning in a kind of nature preserve right off the ocean that was half pine trees and half sand dunes. And I received uh, the most spectacular grace of my life from one moment to the next. I was walking along, lost in my thoughts. I had long since lost any hope in believing that God existed or anything like that. When from one moment to the next, the curtain between earth and heaven disappeared and I found myself in the presence of God, very knowingly in the presence of God, and seeing my life as though I had died and was looking back over my life in the presence of God. And I saw in an instant many, if not most, of the truths of the Catholic faith. I saw that we live forever. I saw that every action has a moral content that's recorded for all eternity, that um, everything that had ever happened to me had been the most perfect thing that could have been arranged coming from the hands of an all-knowing, all-loving God, not only including those things that had caused the most suffering at the time that I had thought of as the greatest disasters, but especially the things that had caused the most suffering at the time. And I saw that my two greatest regrets after I died would be, number one, all of the time and energy I had wasted worrying about not being loved when every moment of my existence I was held in an ocean of love greater than I ever imagined could exist, coming from this all-knowing, all-loving God. And the other great regret would be every hour I had wasted doing nothing of value in the eyes of heaven. I saw that here I had been so worried about life having no meaning, when in fact it has an infinite depth of meaning, because every moment contains the possibility of doing something of value in the eyes of heaven. And every time we take advantage of that opportunity, we will very truly be rewarded for it for all eternity. And every opportunity we let slip and don't take advantage of will be a lost opportunity for all eternity.
most overwhelming aspect of this experience, the most transformative aspect of this experience, was to come into the intimate and deep and certain knowledge that God himself, the God who not only created everything that exists, but created existence itself, not only knew me by name, not only cared about me, but had been watching over me, uh, controlling everything that ever happened to me, but actually knowing how I felt at every moment and caring about how I felt at every moment, such that in a very real way, everything that made me happy made him happy, and everything that made me sad made him sad. And coming into the knowledge of this was really the most revolutionary, transformative aspect of this experience. I, of course, knew that the meaning and purpose of my life was to worship and serve my Lord and God and Master, who is revealing himself to me. But I didn't know his name, and I couldn't think of this as the God of the Old Testament. I couldn't think of this religion as Judaism. The picture of God that emerges from the Old Testament is certainly a picture of a God far more distant and severe and removed from ordinary mankind than this God was. So I, I knew this was my Lord and God and my Master. I knew I wanted nothing but to serve him and worship him properly. And I didn't know what religion to follow to do so. So I prayed at the time. Um, I was actually still walking at the time, even though I had fallen into heaven, so to speak, and could see the spiritual world and was in this intimate communion with God, I was still also seeing the, the physical world around me. Uh, the physical world had become as, as though transparent and I could see through it into the spiritual world. Anyway, I, as I was walking, I prayed to know the name of my Lord and God and Master who is revealing himself to me so I would know what religion to follow. And I prayed as I was walking along, let me know your name. I don't mind if you're Buddha and I have to become Buddhist. I don't mind if you're Christian and I have to become Hindu. I don't mind if you're Apollo and I have to become a Roman pagan, as long as you're not Christ and I have to become Christian. That um, desire for not to be Christ because I didn't want to become Christian came from my being Jewish, and I didn't want to kind of go over to the other side, to the, what I saw as the enemy side, and he respected that and he did not reveal his name to me. So I returned home happier than I had ever been in my life. I knew there was never any reason to be worried or anxious about anything, that absolutely everything that had ever happened to me had been the most perfect thing that could be arranged coming from an all-knowing, all-loving God. Um, and I knew that what awaited us if we play our cards right after we died, which was an eternity of, of a um, happiness and, and bliss and perfection greater than we could ever imagine. And all I wanted to do was know the name of my Lord and God and Master who had revealed himself to me and what religion to follow to, to please him. And I had no idea. So since this had been a mystical experience, I um, turned in that direction to find out more about it, which was a very imprudent thing to do. And I looked into some rather foolish, new agey kinds of directions. But I also did something which bore great fruit which was every night before I went to sleep, I would say a short prayer that I had made up to know the name of my Lord and God and Master who had revealed himself to me in that experience. The year to the day after that first experience, I went to sleep um, after having said that prayer, and also after having said a prayer of thanksgiving for what had happened exactly a year earlier, which is how I know that it was exactly a year. I went to sleep, and I thought I was awoken by a hand gently on my shoulder, and led to a room and left alone with the most beautiful young woman I could ever imagine. And I knew without being told that it was the Blessed Virgin Mary. And when I found myself in her presence, all I wanted to do was, was honor her appropriately. Um, in fact, the first thought that crossed my mind was, oh my goodness, I wish I at least knew the Hail Mary. But I didn't. Uh, the first thing she said to me was she offered to answer any questions I might have for her. Well, my first thought was 
um, that I kind of wanted to ask her to teach me the Hail Mary so I could honor her appropriately. But I was too proud to admit that I didn't know it. So as a kind of indirect way of getting her to teach me the Hail Mary, I asked her what her favorite prayer to her was. She was a bit um, coy. Her first response was, I love all prayers to me. But I was a bit pushy, and I said, but you must love some prayers more than others. And she recited a prayer. Now, she recited it in Portuguese, and I didn't know any Portuguese, so all I could do was try to remember the first few syllables phonetically, and the next morning, as soon as I woke up, I wrote them down phonetically. And later, after speaking to a Portuguese Catholic woman and asking her to recite all of the prayers to Mary in Portuguese, I identified the prayer as, O oh Mary, conceived without sin, pray for us, have recourse to thee. When I went to sleep that night, I knew virtually nothing about the Blessed Virgin Mary. All I knew was from Christmas carols, mostly from Silent Night, and from having seen Christmas crashes sometimes in public places. I had never uh, touched, much less opened a New Testament. I knew none of what she revealed to me in this experience. Uh, the other thing that I want to say is although she was perfectly beautiful to look at, um, indescribably beautiful, even more profoundly affecting was the beauty of her voice, which was composed, uh, the only way I can describe it, is was composed of that which makes music, music. And um, when she spoke, and when the beauty of her voice flowed through me, carrying with it her love, it lifted me up into a state of ecstasy greater than I ever imagined could exist. So most of my questions actually flowed out of my being absolutely overwhelmed by who she was and by her, her grandeur. Um, I'll mention a couple of the questions. They were actually often more exclamations than they were actually questions. For instance, at one point, I kind of stammered out, how can it be, how is it possible? How can it be that you're so glorious, that you're so magnificent, that you're so exalted, how can it be? And her response was just to look down at me almost with pity and shake her head gently and say, Oh no, you don't understand. I'm nothing. I'm a creature. I'm a created thing. He's everything. And then again, out of this desire to somehow honor her appropriately, I asked her what title she liked best for herself. And her response was, I am the beloved daughter of the Father, mother of the Son, and spouse of the Spirit. I asked her several other questions of somewhat less significance. And she spoke to me for another 10 or 15 minutes. She said she had something she wanted to tell me. And after that, the audience was over and I went back to sleep. And the next morning when I woke up, I was hopelessly in love with the Blessed Virgin Mary. And I wanted nothing other than to be as fully and completely Christian as possible. I obviously knew from this experience that the God who had revealed himself to me a year earlier had been Christ. The first experience, I was still walking. I was completely, you know, completely awake, completely conscious. The second experience, the, second, the experience of the Blessed Virgin Mary, I thought I was awake at the time. And my memory represents it as though I had been awake. And I remember it with an absolute word-for-word -word clarity. I actually even remember thinking about other questions to ask that I had decided not to ask and so forth. However, I now understand, although I didn't at the time, that if there had been a camera in the room, it would have shown me asleep in bed uh, throughout that experience. When I woke up, I, I knew I wanted to be as fully and completely a Christian as possible. I literally did not know the difference between Protestantism and the Catholic Church. And there wasn't much I could do other than open a local phone book and start going to a local Protestant church. But as soon as I got to know the pastor a little bit, I shyly asked him about the Blessed Virgin Mary. And when he answered without the respect that I knew that she deserved, I knew this is no place for me. In fact, during that experience of her, I actually saw, this is difficult to describe, but I saw how 
all of the grace, all of the gifts that flow from divinity into humanity flow through the Blessed Virgin Mary. I saw her as a kind of pipeline or conduit connecting divinity to humanity um, through which all of, all of God's graces and gifts flowed. In fact, going back to that experience, it was very difficult for me to understand that the Blessed Virgin Mary was entirely and completely human and no more than human because of how, because of her unique connection, let's say, to the divinity. That was the motivation, so to speak, behind her saying, I'm nothing, I'm a creature, I'm a created thing. She wasn't about to allow me to have any confusion about um, her status, which is completely as a creature, and being nothing more or less than what God made. Nonetheless, I, as I said, I saw the uh, extraordinary, uh, her, her extraordinary and unique role in the distribution of graces. Back to the next morning and the following weeks, um, I knew that I didn't belong in that Protestant church where the pastor had um, not much respect for the Blessed Virgin Mary. And I used to spend all my free time visiting Marian shrines. There was a shrine to Our Lady of La Salette about 45 minutes from where I lived. And I used to go there three or four times a week to walk the grounds and to feel the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary and to commune with her. And that shrine was held by the Catholic Church. And sometimes when I was there, there would be a mass going on. And whenever I was in the presence of a mass going on, I was filled with a tremendous desire, I could almost say a lust, a greed, to receive the uh, communion, to receive the Eucharist, even though I literally did not know what it was. Those two things led me, without uh, much of a detour, into the Catholic Church, essentially knowing who the Blessed Virgin Mary is and having a tremendous love and devotion to her and also wanting to receive uh, communion daily if possible. By entering the Catholic Church, I not only didn't stop being Jewish, but the only way I can understand it is that I became more Jewish than ever because I became a Jew who was following the Jewish Messiah rather than a Jew who refused essentially to follow the Jewish Messiah and was stuck in pre-Messianic Judaism. In fact, my understanding of the relationship is that the Catholic Church is post-Messianic Judaism and that Judaism is pre-Messianic Catholicism that they're one and the same plan for salvation. I must admit, I did not accept all of Catholic dogma. I held on to a lot of beliefs that I had had prior to these experiences. And I'm a bit ashamed to say that it was actually only probably about a year, a year and a half after I had entered the Catholic Church and been baptized, that I finally realized that everything the Catholic Church taught is certainly true. In other words, everything in Catholic dogma was in fact true. And perhaps I'll mention that the last teaching that I was willing to accept was the eternity of hell. I almost you know, refused to accept the fact that it was possible to be condemned to hell for all eternity. It just didn't make any sense to me. It didn't seem to be consistent with God's love and mercy and so forth. And um, what happened was I, I mentioned this to a, a priest who was directing me, and he looked a little bit surprised. And he said, but it's dogma. You have to believe it. And that's when the scales fell from my eyes, that it's not up to me to judge what God could do or what might be true. 
Um, if it's taught as certainly true by the Catholic Church, then I know it to be true, not because it makes sense to me, but because it is revealed by God through the authority of the Catholic Church. And of course, over time, I, I, I came to understand from inside why it might be true, but I had to let go of that presumption of that incredible human pride to say that I'm able to understand everything that God might do. I, I'm able to understand why and what God might do, and I somehow put myself, it's almost, if I can say so, it's almost like a Luciferic position, putting oneself in the position of judging God and what's possible and reasonable for God. And I am infinitely grateful that I received these experiences and was brought into the fullness of the truth, into a personal relationship with God, into knowing everything I, I wished to know as I was a child growing up, and of, without being presumptuous, a reasonable hope of an eternity of bliss and love in the presence of God. If you have good news, we expect you to want to share it. Salvation in Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who for love of us and for our salvation came down from heaven. Salvation in His name, and He is the only Savior, is what we are on earth for. Therefore, all those who spread the good news of salvation in Jesus Christ, we should encourage them. I can speak, but how many people can I reach alone? But the media, the television people, the radio, the newspapers, and all those who use the computer and its derivatives in various ways to spread the gospel. We must thank them. We must encourage them. We must work with them so that they can continue to spread the good news. There is so much news that is not so wonderful in the world, but there is also news that is wonderful on the gospel of Jesus Christ. We encourage them and beg God to bless them especially the Shalom World TV. God bless you.